So recording is going and we are live on Facebook and Heather, the floor is yours. Hi everybody, thank you for joining us. Um, this is the Seniors Network Group. We're here talking about avatars, customer avatars. And it's something I really have no idea about. And when I was sending out a post to everybody, Andrew was telling me um, that, you know, that it's, it's something that I even am confused about. <laughs> and so I, Andrew, the floor is yours. You're gonna share your screen, everything else. We'd love to hear a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's a uh, it, it's a pleasure to be here and hopefully shed a little bit of light on this uh, on this topic. Um, I will get the screen share going. Um, let's do this one. Let's share. All right. So you guys should see the screen OK now. Um, and so, you know, when Donald asked me to, to talk on this, this is from so a bit of background on here, the slides are taken directly from a program I've involved in called Gateway to Mastery. Um, it's not an EXP specific program, um, but it is a program that dives deep into building a marketing based business. Um, and that is where the niche and the avatar comes from, as it is part of that. And uh, Donald will have more information. There's another version of it opening up in January and EXP agents get a nice discount from the public um, version of it. So he'll tell you more about that, but about myself. So very quick on me, I've been an agent since 2003. Um, I'm currently licensed in Texas and California. So I've run, um, I've run teams that operate in both states. Um, formerly before that was a consultant doing product planning and market research um, for different products, used to play professional golf. That was part of uh, my niche, and it also turned into part of my avatar a long, seems like a long time ago now. Um, and, and, you know, at the height of it, I ran a team of about seven. We were highly efficient for what we did. Um, and it was a very mo marketing focused business that, you know, dominated a given area and a specific customer, right? And so that's the part that we really wanna get into here tonight. So when you're defining an, an avatar, and I'm gonna go into in just a minute what an avatar actually is for our purposes, um, but what you're going to find is it becomes the very foundation of what you build your business on. So the avatar and the niche is going to, they're going to work together. They're going to work hand in glove. And I know that there's a kind of a specialty here with 55 plus, um, and we're going to touch on that a little bit at the end. But when you fully get this concept down, it will completely shape your marketing and the direction that your business goes. It's going to give you some clear direction on what it is that you're focused on um, and who it actually is that you're talking to. And I think the main point of all of this is the avatar becomes the who, right? Out of everything that we do, we're all agents, right? And I mean, the fact that there's even, there's even groups where they specialize in 55 plus or anything is a huge step forward. Because if you think about it, the, the most differentiation that exists in real estate is residential or commercial. And that's not much at all. That's a wide open space that leaves a lot to be desired. So First of all, what is an avatar? Okay, so we're gonna start with what it's not. Okay, the avatar here, it's not the Sims character, or it's not the character of ourselves we create in EXP world. That is definitely a certain type of avatar, but that is not the avatar in which we're referring to. The avatar in this case is actually nothing more than a representation of your ideal client. That's it. It's a representation of your ideal client. So I'm sure it'll come as no surprise and anyone that's been in business for a while, how many people have done transactions with clients they absolutely couldn't stand? They drove them nuts. Yeah, hands go up exactly. So one of the things that you accomplish through this exercise is you eliminate them before they ever come into your world. And you do that by being very specific about who you actually want to work with. 
And to a certain extent, it becomes a little bit of a self-selection process. You, they will select you rather than you selecting them or ending up with them by default. So here's where it starts to go into and will help define all of the marketing that you end up doing. Okay, so as we know, you know, one of the things as agents, it's kind of interesting is, you know, when you get your license, they don't teach you anything about marketing. The business side of real estate is not really touched on at all. Um, it's all pick up the phones, chase a transaction, call everybody you know, whether they want to hear from you or not. That's not marketing. That's chasing, right? Marketing is attracting. And that's, that's ultimately where you want to be. So as you go, in, you know, luckily, if you've been in the business long enough and you pay your dues, as they say, and put in the hours, you've got enough past clients to where they generate enough referrals where everything that you do is inbound, right? So what this does is supplement that. It brings even the people you don't know to you as inbound, but they're people that you select and they're actually people that you want to work with. And the basic principles of marketing is that you put the right message in front of the right person at the right time. And that becomes key. It's not just broadcasting to everyone, hoping something will stick, the spaghetti on the wall, if you like. It's actually putting the message that needs to be heard by the right person at that right time. So the problem is, as we, when we do things, as I say here, is as you know, when you try and speak to everyone, you actually speak to no one, right? It's if you're sitting there and you're not speaking directly to a specific person, you know, then your, your message falls flat. So it, it, it doesn't carry any weight, right? It's very general. And if you've noticed most of the marketing out there and most of the things that people put out, most of the professional marketing out there, I should say, it's very, very specific. It's tailored towards a very specific individual or a very specific demographic. They're speaking to a specific audience, okay? And then you avoid falling into a, this idea of being nondescript, this idea of speaking to no one by being very clear about who your ideal client is and knowing absolutely everything you possibly can about them. And that's the area where we're going to dive a little bit deeper when I talk about knowing everything that you possibly can about them. The more you understand about what makes your ideal client tick, the easier it's going to be for you to reach them with the right message at the right time with something that's important to them. So when we go on to this idea of avatar, it's not new, it, ideal customer profile, um, ideal client, whatever you want to call it. And if you look at it, every major retailer out there and every service provider out there already understands this. They have research departments figuring out who their ideal clients are. If you think about this, I just used a few examples here. So think of breakfast cereal, right? Who is the star who are the, the advertisers going after if they're, if they're advertising Frosted Flakes, right? It's kids. Who appear in the commercials? Kids. Who's the messaging and the language geared towards? Kids. You know, it's a tiger, right? You, you don't see seniors in Frosted Flakes commercials, right? Likewise, you don't see kids in commercials for oat bran. It's, it's the flip-flop. They're very clear on who it is that they're focusing on. Disney's another great one. If, if you look at their ads, even though the ads can appeal to a large variety of people, the vast majority of ads for anything Disney, Disney parks, Disney vacations, Disney cruises, they've again got young families, right? It's always got, you know, the smiling kid, maybe with a tooth missing with the Mickey Mouse ears on. They're very, very specific in who it is that they're targeting and who their messaging is directed at. Same thing, we use, you know, exercise is great or Peloton as it's there. They're going for a young professional crowd for the most part. That is who everything that they do is geared towards, all right? Now, typical real estate advertising, if you think about this, doesn't follow this at all. 
It's not what we're taught to do, right? And the imaging ties in with your ideal client and ties in with what you do from a marketing's perspective across everything, right? So right here, does that look familiar? Just the house just listed, four bedroom, two and a half bath. So I'm going to pull up a few photos here and you're going to notice that there's no words to them. Words are a part of it, but who is this targeted towards? Nobody in particular, is it? It's just a house. We don't know anything about it. So this is what typically happens from a real estate perspective. Whenever we do something, whenever we're speaking to a potential audience, we either make it all about the house or we make it all about us. And that's where marketing falls flat. It's never about you, ever. You can't ever win this game by making something about yourself by saying 35 years experience, 35 years a broker, because someone else is going to come along and say 36. No, most homes sold compared to who? Until when? Someone will come along and beat that as well. So it's very nondescript. It's not speaking to anyone. So if you think if someone sees this in a magazine, if they're scrolling a feed on Facebook, is that a showstopper and who's it speaking to, right? So the answer is probably you're going to find it is no. What about an ad that says that? Who's that targeted towards? Young kid going off to college. Hmm. So maybe we've got uh, someone approaching. Empty nesters. Yeah. Empty nesters. Yeah. Or soon to be empty nesters right here. Right. Right. So we can tell that just by the photograph. So if somebody's had a kid just go off to college, does this appeal to them more? It'd be downsizing. It'd this be would down. be a great downsizing video. There you go. Like right. So you're pulling that out, right? Simply from the image that's used without any language, right? So we're already starting to think who it is that we're wanting to target, right? So that who is starting to resonate through here. Okay. What about this one? This was actually highly successful last year. Like you're living in an apartment and it's too small. Living in an apartment that was too small. And this was actually used in an ad geared towards everyone working from home due to COVID. Okay. So again, the imagery of the ad, small space, work equipment, computer, right? It's, it's speaking to somebody, again, with no words, just through the image. All right? how about that one? Families. Family. I'm hoping that one of the 15 people on this call will. Family, yeah. fun, fun Family times. Fun. Yeah. So if you're, you know, pool home, summer was just here, family, you know. So again, the point is, you know, very brief as an introduction, and we're going to get really into the avatar aspect of it here. But you can see just by this initial imagery in here, in something that we do, when we talk about marketing and we talk about reaching our ideal audience, it's again, it's that right message. So there is copy that's involved in this, obviously, but they always say a picture talk says a thousand words. It's worth a thousand words, right? And so right here, we're already making a difference just by changing up the imaging that we use in something that we do. We're already starting to identify a potential target audience and who we're after, right? We want to eliminate the people that we're not. So if you go back and you think about that first, um, that first image of just listed, it could have been under contract. It could have been just sold. It's really speaking to nobody. It's you're trying to go after somebody that may or may not be thinking about selling their home. But if that's the case, you've already lost. So the goal of all of this is to win that position in the mind of your prospect or your target before they ever get there. Again, you're going to draw them in. Okay? So when you're creating your avatar, and we're going to get into specifically why you're creating your avatar, but when you're creating your avatar, you need to be extremely specific and very detail-oriented. Okay, the more detailed your avatar profile is, the easier it is for you to talk to them. OK, 
Okay. Now, if you're sitting, if you go to coffee and you're meeting, you know, one of your best friends, how easy is it to have a conversation? You just, exactly. I mean, you just slip right into, hey, how's it going? What'd you do last week? What's the latest on this? Let's catch up on this. You guys have so much in common that it's so easy to go into a conversation. On the flip side, if you sit down and you're at a table and you don't know anything about any of the people there, right? What do you talk about? It's dicing, it's dancing around a little bit, trying to get to know what's going on. And so, you know, you don't really know, you don't know anything about them. You don't know what they like. You don't know what topics are off limits. You don't know what you can say. Do I bring up politics? What if they like the other guy, right? I mean, it could be a disaster right from the beginning. Okay. And if you think about it, we all know this, people tend to do business with people they know, like, and trust, or they tend to do business with people they think they know, like, and trust. Here's the reason I say, think, you know, like, and trust. Does everyone on here have a favorite actor or actress, movie star, celebrity? Yeah. All the heads are nodding. Okay. How many times have you met them? Never. Never. Why do you like them? It's on my favorite show. It's the persona that they put out there. Oh, he's so nice. She's so nice. And that's just what, that's just what they have portrayed. You're attracted to them, even though you've never met them. You don't really know anything about them. You've built up this persona in your mind, right? Also for whatever show that they're on, the show's producers have already identified you as the avatar. That's who the show's geared towards, right? And that's how they start to cast people in those roles because they know who appeals to that demographic the most. So when we start breaking this all down from our perspective, it's how does this even make any sense? And how do we use that with regards to a real estate transaction or anything that we do in real estate? Well, everybody here at some point is probably doing something to generate new business, right? Whether it be video, if you're not doing video, you should be because it's easy. And I know the camera is scary, but it's the great way to get into it. I mean, you're on camera now, so it's, well, most of you, so it's not too bad, all right? So if you write a blog post, you write an email, you put out a Facebook post, you do anything, you're going to start crafting those messages as if you're speaking directly to your avatar, as if you're speaking exactly to that client, that, that, that person that you meet just like you're talking to your friend, right? And then I want you to think about it this way from a, think of it from a listing description or maybe a walking tour. If you think about a a video tour that is done um, or even if you did an introduction, right? This is just an easy example to use. One of the things that you've got to look at is most of them, like that first photo I showed you, become very nondescript. Welcome to this beautifully redecorated four bedroom, three bath home located in the blah, 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 that does blah, blah, blah. That's not speaking to anyone, right? May get some views, but it's not speaking to anyone, right? Now, if you know your avatar and you know who that home is geared towards, or you know what you're trying to do, maybe, you know, maybe your ideal client, you know, is obviously in this case, you know, seniors, but maybe they're active. Maybe they still like, maybe they spend a lot of time wherever it be. They like to play golf. They like to play tennis. This place has a pool. It's got a great covered patio. You imagine after that, after a day on the tennis courts, coming home and relaxing here, you start telling a story. You're speaking directly to them. Those, that avatar, that ideal customer is going to resonate with that story. They're going to hear and they're going to picture themselves in that place, much more so than if you say, the home has a nice covered patio and a sparkling pool out back. Get very specific, very, very specific. I'm not talking about violating fair housing, but you can get very specific on who it is that you're talking to. When you start 
directing the message toward a certain type of client, a certain type of person that you're wanting to attract, who is going to call on that the person that you directed the message to? And then if you start sharing, man, if I lived here, this is what I'd like to do. You put yourself in it. Now you're relatable. And the minute you're relatable in that way, and you start telling a story to that person and specific to their interests, now they're more likely to be drawn to you. That's how you start creating that know, like, and trust relationship. So one of the things that you want to keep in mind whenever you're doing any sort of marketing like that is the first thing that you do is you always state the problem and then offer the solution, right? That's key marketing principle 101, right? That's just kind of a side note. It's not specifically about the, the avatar, but it was a good place to put it in. So for instance, let's go back to that photo I had, as we said, downsizers, child going off to college. Now, all of a sudden, if I shoot a video or if I do something, uh, an ad, anything that I put out there, and I start out specifically saying, home suddenly larger than it used to be. Do you have memories of the kids running up and down the stairs? But now that last one just went off to college and you're wondering what you're going to do. Well, if that's my avatar and I'm after a downsizing market, man, I just pulled at their heartstrings and I just spoke directly to them. I've gotten very specific into what their problem is. Maybe they don't know what they're going to do. Now you offer the solution. Call me for a free consultation, right? You're in their head. You're thinking about what they want. You've identified that aspect of it. So you've gotten very, very specific about that client, not just, oh, it's time. Is it time to downsize? No, you really got to get into if it's a downsize or speaking directly to that. What you're actually finding is by being very specific in who you're targeting, you actually speak to a larger audience. Okay. So if you try and speak to everyone, you speak to no one. When you speak to someone specifically, you actually speak to several. You open that up substantially. So go take yourself back to school, right? How many times? There's no stupid questions. Don't be afraid to raise your hand. If one person has the question, somebody else does as well, right? That's always, always the case. And you're going to find that when people share in that type of environment, a lot of people gain value from it. Okay, so what you're going to do when you start identifying your avatar, here's where we start getting very, very specific, right? So when you want to identify your avatar completely, and I did say you're going to want to go detailed on this, you want to start thinking about, and you've got to put some time into this in knowing exactly, exactly who your ideal client is, right? You can use a past client that you just absolutely loved as a model. You've got to remember your avatar is not a real person. This is one area where people get tripped up on it. Okay. It's not somebody, you know, it can be based on someone, you know, it's a representation of the best qualities of you're basically building your ultimate client. If you think about it that way, what do they do? What do they have? How, how do they act? right? Who is it? Who do I really want to be around? If I could choose every single client I ever work with for the rest of my career, who is it? Now we're getting into the details of who that avatar is. So you want to look at, you want to look at it from a demographic perspective. How old are they? Okay, as we mentioned, I know this, a lot of focus here on 55 plus, but I'll tell you right now, the demographic and targeting for someone that's 55, 56, 57 is completely different from someone that's 75, 76, 77. Okay, so they're both 55 plus, but which is it? They've got different needs. The 55 plus is looking at things different from the 75, right? So you want to know how old, again, how old are they? Are they retired? Do they still work? Do they have income? Right? Are they married? Or are you dealing with a single person? Maybe it's a senior that's now a widower. Very different, very different point of view. And the more specific you get within your targeted area and the more identifiable you make this ideal customer, the better you will do. The more your message will resonate. Do they have kids? 
Did they have kids? How old are they? Did they move away? How far away? How's the last year been for them not being able to visit? Right? So now all of a sudden you start getting into all these different things, right? As well as the psychographic aspect of this avatar. What's their view of the world? You know, have they reached the point where they're, you know, the world has gone to hell in a handbasket, right? If only things were the way they used to be, right? You know, what are their beliefs? What do they believe in? Right. Do they believe everything's messed up and we're going to be a socialist nation within five years? I don't know. I mean, what do they think, right? And I mean, everyone's, and I know the question starts coming up is, why on earth are we doing all of this to do with real estate? I'm telling you, the minute you dive into this level to your customer, it changes everything in the way you act and interact with these people. What lifestyle do they live? Are they active? Do they like to travel? Where do they go? What restaurants do they like? They go to happy hour every night? Do they have happy hour every night? What hobbies do they have? Yeah, Donald's, Donald's nodding. Um, what are their hobbies? They like sports? What are their interests? Do they volunteer? Do they do charity work? Okay, so anything and everything you can think about is what we're getting into here. We're getting super, super specific on what it is. We're building up that ideal profile. Okay, now you need to name them. Give them names, right? You want to give them names. Go to their physical features. How tall are they? How much do they weigh? What do they look like? Picture them. And you can get very specific on what they look like. You really want to build out this profile really, really specific on who they are. And, you know, again, as we touched on the children, do they live nearby? What type of car do they drive? Are they practical? You know, just like to do things middle of the road, where do they shop? What type of vacations do they take? Right, so we're really going deep, deep, deep here on this to try and picture everything about who they are, what they want, what they do. Okay. What do they do in their free time? Do they play a sport, maybe golf, maybe tennis? They still into, they like prefer college football, NFL. They watch soccer. What sports, if they do any? Favorite place to go on vacation? How they typically dress? Golf shirt? Um, dressed up, shorts, t-shirts, casual? Mm, good one here. What social networks do they use? You don't want to become a Instagram expert if they're on Facebook, right? So build that out. Get really, really specific, again, on what it is that they do. Do they spend time on YouTube, right? What is it about that what they do, okay? So the biggest question that we often have with this is, I get asked, I'll be honest, it says, well, if we go this deep into who somebody is, I'm limiting myself into all of this other business I could do. And no, you're not. You're not limiting yourself in any other business. When you create the avatar, it doesn't mean that it's the only person you're going to do business with, right? But it's the person that you're going to directly address your messaging to. Right. So, you know, one example that we we say, if if, you know, I turn around, um, if I was to ask you, hey, you know, if I worked at the local school and I would say to you, hey, can you do me a favor? You know, can can you come down to the school? I'd like you to, uh, you know, just give a quick 10 minute talk to the graduating class. Can you do that for me? And you're like, yeah, that would be great. We just want to, you know, you share some of your experiences with them. And you say, yeah, that would be fantastic. So. You know, you get down to the school thinking that you're speaking to the graduating high school seniors that are going off to college or to make their way into the world, 
And you come to find out that you're speaking to the elementary school fifth graders that are going into middle school. How different is that message? Right? So if you're going to create something, whether it be on video or whether it be from a marketing aspect, it's a whole lot easier if you're going to write something again for your best friend. If you're going to write something for them or tell them how to do something, explain something to them, such as, you know, how to downsize, what things to look for, um, you know, what options they've got if they sell that house, what sort of things that are there. And you're speaking to a friend, you're going to get very specific and it's going to completely change the messaging that you have, right? When you speak specifically to someone, right? Rather than just a general, if you're downsizing, consider this, right? You want to get really, really dialed in on who that person is, as it's going to then change and actually make make it easier for you to craft messages to send out there to the others when you're very, very clear on who it is that you're working with, right? So we're quite a ways through. Um, what, and I know questions are at the end, but with this on avatars, what are we thinking so far? What questions do we have right now? Um, or what do we need clarification on from this aspect? And we'll talk a little bit more towards the end on how this goes into possibly how it applies to the niche and what we're looking at there. Andrew, one of the questions Isabel um, had is, how do I discover the information if I'm not in that age group? So if you're not 55 plus, um, how, do you, how do you work your way into it? So remember, there's, you know, um, I'm actually looking at the chat now. And, you know, been verified gives a lot of information. That's great. Remember, your avatar is not real. So the information you give, it's made up. Here, here's the challenge. We start to take on the idea that we're, we're, we're now doing consumer research. We're not doing consumer research for this exercise. We are describing who we want to work with. Trust me, the person exists to a certain extent. But remember, the avatar isn't actually real, right? It's just simply a representation of who your, who your favorite client is or who your ideal client is. So, Isabel, what you were looking at, if I asked you, hey, think of a transaction that you did and you absolutely love the people. What did you have in common with them? You know, what was it about them that you really liked? What if I told you every transaction you did could be with them? Right. So you take that mentality to it and that's where you start building it out. So the fact that you're trying to look and, and research somebody or anyone tries to research someone, that doesn't really matter as much because you're not looking for what an actual demographic is. You're looking for what your ideal demographic is. Does that make sense on the distinction there? I know it's confusing. Yes, good. Any other any other questions on that? Donald, how about you? Because we went, you've been through this a couple times with me in different ways. This is a slightly different way to present it. Um, and you got to a point where it started to click more. Um, so what parts of it there? Um, yeah, so for me, so for me, the thing that clicked was. I'm creating this, this person that I don't want to work with. Right. You know, the ideal person that I want to work with. And, you know, as you go into the niche part of it, where do I want to work with them in particular? And it was, for me, it was, it was eye-opening because I was, I was like a young agent all over again going, I'll work with anybody anywhere let's let's go do anything even though the majority of my business was in the senior community now that's all i work with now and i want to i most of the people that i work with are couples they're anywhere from 55 to 70 years old 
And once it seems like once you cross that 70 years old, there is a change. There is a change yeah. in who you're working with, because as you mentioned earlier, what they're looking for in many cases is very different than someone who's under the age of 70. At right. least that's been my experience is 70 is kind of that crossing point. And, and it really depends on how active they are. Going back to your point earlier about being active, if they're, if they're the type of people that sit in their home, watch a good movie, read a good book, and they're not active socially or getting out, um, they're very different people than people who are out playing golf, out socializing, out meeting and greeting people and things like that. Exactly. Um, so, you know, for me personally, I, I wanna meet couples who are 55 to 70 that are act, active in many different ways, socially, sports wise, things like that. Um, and that's why I help run this, you know, this group, as well as some other groups socially here where I live. So that's what I like to do. And that's kind of really what I've niched down to. Is these are the people that I want to work with. So you bring up a great point there. And that's why it becomes key, because the thing to remember on this is if you really get clear about who your ideal customer is, it's not saying that, you know, so in your case, based on the age range, you could almost say that your ideal customer is 62, right? I mean, you just kind of split it in there. So if you were going to build out an avatar profile, you know, I've shared before with people, I mean, mine's a little, mine's a little different. I mean, I've, you know, my kids are older, but I've coached soccer, been very involved in youth sports, things like that. And I pulled out one of my worksheets from before, you know, and, and my avatar was Paul and Julie. No, Paul was 44. Julie was 42. They had two kids. They had a boy and a girl. You know, the boy was in ninth grade. The girl was in seventh grade here. I mean, I could go down the list. It was very, very specific. Now, the thing is with you is what you're going to find. And we all we all do this. We you know, you reach a certain age, but you don't feel that old. You reach a certain age and you do feel that old. But for the most part, your brain doesn't. Right. A lot of times you look back at what people 20 years younger than you were doing and you remember it like it's yesterday. OK, now that's the point here. Right. So if you were to create a customer avatar that is so detailed that, you know, he's 62, they're a married couple that are this, you're going to attract people. Right. That are 55 to 70 based upon the wording and the language that you use in ads and based on the things that you do. You can go out, you can review, you know, a great new restaurant, for instance. Um, now, if you do that and say it's a great place to go on, you know, a Thursday night or a Tuesday night, whatever it may be, like you just said, if the people that get your messaging are 75 and don't go out, they basically Basically, stay at home. They may have friends come over every so often. Um, they don't really, except for necessities, they don't leave the house, right? Your message isn't going to resonate with them. They're not going to call you, which is great because that's not who you wanted to work with anyway. Okay. So that is where that distinction comes from. So uh, again, it's not limiting. Um, it's actually freeing because it's getting very specific. So that's a, that's a good point. Um, is that still making sense to everyone? Yes. Yeah. So Deborah ahead. asked, would you be able to share your slide deck with us, please? Yeah, I can, uh, I can make sure uh, Donald's got a link to it. Do you teach in the university? I, I do not teach in EXP University. I do some training and coaching outside. Um, and then most of what I do is more linked with, um, success enterprises, um, on that side. Um, and that's where this information all comes from that program, which is put together with success. Um, 
All right. So I'm actually seeing the screen like you are. So I don't actually know what the next slide is going to be. So we'll just kind of explore and go together. Okay. So it is applying applying what we just did towards your 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 niche. So we'll dive into that a little bit to talk about those distinctions. But that avatar, um, I've actually got a document, um, either Heather or Donald, I will get to you, um, that is a worksheet that can be used to develop your avatar. Um, it's like six pages long. I mean, it's really detailed. Um, and going through that and understanding it in that way will, again, it'll, it'll make it very clear on who your ideal client is. And so again, you know, the biggest thing I can say is remember it, it doesn't have to be real information. Um, it's, it's made up to a certain extent. It's, it's, it's your character. It's who you want to be, right? It's that ideal. Okay. So as we said, 55 plus is a great start. Now let's get more specific, right? As Donald just mentioned perfectly is there's a very big difference in distinction within that. Right, so now it's time to niche down on that niche and we'll start seeing how that relates to the avatar that we're gonna be creating. So when you further segment down the, the niche, you're gonna start applying the traits and characteristics of your avatar, right? So again, how active are they? What do they like to do? You know, are they, you know, are they in a, you know, is it a newly 55 looking to downsize? Okay, so you start thinking about that. So someone between the ages of 55 and 65, that could be the time when the, the kids are off to college. Um, they don't need the big house, but it doesn't mean they're ready to move into a 55 plus community either, right? There's other options there, right? You know, are they considering that community, right? Maybe they want to move by the coast. You know, we've helped people, you know, in California where I was, I was more inland, Um and we help several people sell and, you know, move into smaller condos by the beach. That was their ideal. That was what it meant for them. That's a completely different person. That's a completely different market, right? Maybe they want to split time between two homes, right? What does that look like? Maybe it's a home near the kids and the grandkids, right? Maybe that's part of it. Um, maybe they want to use equity from the sale, to buy two properties and or an investment property to consider having income going. Well, again, when you start looking at all these possibilities, the mind can start to open because you can start to see how many different directions we can go here, right? In what we're doing. And if you become known as, you know, either, you know, as Donald's in the, the village is a very specific community. If you become known as the expert there and you really focus in on that, right? You start to gain market share. You start to be known for that. Again, you know, if you've got an area where you're speaking to people about downsizing and it's a, it's a different type of downsizing. What I mean by that is maybe you, you put information out there on what are all the questions. So remember on the marketing side, I said, it's really important to state the problem and then offer a solution. If they're going from 4,000 square feet to 2000 square feet, how do they get rid of the stuff? Be a resource for that. Know them inside and out. Know what their challenges are. You know, again, if they're 55 to 60, they don't want to roll over, right? They're still, they're still out there. What do they do for fun in that different community, in that area, wherever it is that they're going? Answer these questions. What social groups can they join? What are the active groups? Okay, you know, and then you can also segment this in a different way. You can actually start focusing on lifestyle and hobbies rather than just the age aspect, right? We all, you know, I'm sure we all know there's people that are 55 that appear to be 85 and there's people that are 85 that seem like they're 55, right? So at certain times that might not matter, you know, it, again, you could focus in. You know, as I mentioned, I played golf, right? So I focused in on golf when I first started real estate. Everything I did was around people that were passionate about golf. I could talk their language, right? Made it real easy for me because anytime someone listed their home, they, the listing presentation was on a golf course. It was kind of cool, 
no, still working and playing golf four or five days a week. Right. So, and I developed that. Now you're in with the golf group. Now all the golf buddies know you. Right. So there was that aspect. The same thing. Maybe they're into tennis or cycling or swimming. Maybe it's around a charity, charity events. Right. Maybe it's volunteering. You know, maybe it's volunteering at a school or a church or something along those lines. But you're not going to be able to determine any of that until you identify who it is that you want to work with. And you're going to find it's, it's obviously going to align with what you like, right? So the idea is you want to get it to the point to where if you were going to have dinner with your client, would you have a good time? And if you find that you've got nothing to talk about and nothing in common, the answer is no, right? But it's going to be a very easy conversation and not forced if that's not the case, and you've both got passions and things that you share together. All right. So there's different ways to segment that 55 plus community in general. And so these are just a few of them. So the point is here, I mean, the, the main point of, of this evening is saying, it's fine if we turn around and say, hey, you know, my goal, I'm just going to work with the 55 plus crowd. But we know that there's so many different aspects to that. And if it gets very difficult to know what to say if we don't know who we're saying it to, right? So that's where we really have to dial in. And when you start to do this, you're going to find is, you know, whether you actively write blog posts or whether you produce video or whether you put different posts out on Facebook or you do different things, if you actually make all of the posts, videos, blogs, anything that you do tied in with something that you're passionate about, it becomes super easy. It's not a chore to do it. It's really easy to do it, right? And that becomes the difference. If you're passionate about helping people, and like we, we talked about the 55 plus downsizers, but what about the opposite? What about the people that are older where it's time to consider selling and you know assisted livings in there? What does that look like? Maybe that's your passion. Maybe that's your ideal client. Now, all hey, of a sudden, Andrew. it's very different when you start focusing in on that. Yeah. Hey, Andrew. Uh, Donald and I took uh, your class together, and that's exactly where my passion is. I am probate certified. Yeah. And I help the families that have no clue how to get rid of whatever. Yeah. And and it's a total opposite thought process. And a lot of people think that's morbid, but somebody's got to do it. Somebody's helping it. Maybe they are going to an assisted living, independent living, not the fact they died. But people think once you know how to do probate, you can do anything. <laughs> it, you, no, you, yeah. And I, you bring up a great point there because the, the, the point, you know, basically the whole point point of this entire exercise, to be honest with you, is real estate is just a part of life, right? It's not the be all and end all. It just so happens to be what we do. It's a big part because for most people, it's their biggest investment, but it doesn't revolve for the most things. It doesn't revolve around a house. We've, we've done that. We've made everything that we do about the buying and selling of a house. And that's not it at all. That's actually the byproduct. If you think if that if it was always about the house, why do new communities build such elaborate community centers with the pools and the weight rooms and the meeting rooms and the pool tables and the tennis courts? Because the community is catering to a lifestyle and you can just or, you know, or they have a golf course. That's what they're catering to right now as agents. We need to start thinking about it and doing the exact same thing. Right? So now all of a sudden, if we start saying, if we get very, very clear on who it is that we want to work with, and that's the key word, because it's not who we need to work with or who we end up with by default, but if we get very, very clear about who we want to work with, now that transforms everything. Now all of a sudden, you become the go-to resource for anyone that relates to that. Right. So now all of a sudden, it's not just about the house that's being sold. Now, all of a sudden, you've helped the, the owners and their families, connected them with all the resources, and have connections with the assisted living facilities that answers all the questions about what it's like to make that transition. 
you know, concerned about giving up independence, concerned about this, you answer all of it. How many blog posts did I just give you, right? I mean, there's infinite things you could write about, infinite amount of information you could put out there. And it's because you're focused on the person. You're focused on their needs. And the real estate just kind of happens in that case. So it's kind of taking things and putting it on their head and doing it a little bit backwards. You know, a lot of times we, we do focus on specific types of, of property because that's what we, we do. But it's really different when you start asking people the different, there was, you know, we had a, I had a new lead come in this morning. And, you know, one of the questions I asked as they were, as they, where is a text back and forth, I said, what is it about your current place? What is it about where you currently live that you're looking to change? And just think about that question for a minute. Right? What are we trained to say? How many bedrooms and bathrooms? What size home are you looking for? I didn't say that. I focused on their need. So the question was, you know, again, it was, what is it about where you currently live that you're looking to change? What do you think they said? It's too small. We don't need this. I need an extra bit. We only have three bedrooms. I need four. I'm only in this many square feet. I need this many. They started opening up about what they want, right? Without actually me asking them what they want, right? It was focused on a life, more of a lifestyle type question. And so, you know, I'll often use a question very similar about what are you looking for in your new community? What's important to you? All right, so now they start opening up about how close to schools they want to be or if a community pool is important, right? So it's, it's just a shift in the mentality of attacking things from a lifestyle perspective and not just making it about the house or making it anything about me. I can find you this. I can do this. I can do that. That should be eliminated. And that, again, so when that comes back and we look at it from the avatar perspective, if you're very, very clear on who it is that your ideal client is and who you want to work with, then those conversations become really easy, right? So you're, you're covering the whole gambit of the lifestyle that they're after, not only the house that they want. All right. So did we go deep enough into avatars? Did we explain it good enough? What did you get out of it, Heather? <laughs> way different than what I was assuming. <laughs> um, I actually loved everything about it. And yes, as Donald was saying, and Debbie, it's a very different market from 55 to 70 to 80. Mm -hmm. But yet, I don't think people realize that it is the largest homeownership market. They own outright a majority of the homes. Yep. So when people are marketing, they're losing touch of who they're marketing to. Right. And it, so I think that connection is something that's lost. And, and that, that's a key point. I mean, you said that, I mean, you just saying that when they own their home outright, you can look, man, look at the possibilities that exist just in that statement. Right. What if you threw a message out there? Um, yeah, good point there. Clients don't know what what you know unless they know you care. Or they don't care what you know unless they know you care. Absolutely. So when you go after it from that perspective, it changes everything. Right. So you're really, you know, the whole point of obviously the the avatar is getting to know what it is that you need to care about on their behalf, right? Knowing what's important to them. And going back to what you just said, Heather, imagine if, you know, you look at things. So take a, something I read today. Okay, so we all know home prices have gone crazy. We know that we faced bidding wars. We've know that faced all of this. What many of us probably don't know, and I didn't know until today, not only are the homes for sale in limited supply, Rental properties are in limited supply for renters, okay? There are bidding wars on rent going on. There are multiple applicants bidding different rent amounts to try and get into a rental. So just think about that for a minute. Now, if you go to a senior community or 55 plus there and they own their homes outright, man, 
what if they pulled money out of that house to buy a rental property? Well, and just, yes. And just, so dead yeah, and just created dead another dead. income stream for themselves because they're, uh, okay, Your loan so, to value is going to be so ridiculously so low. So, Andrew, right? thank you for bringing that up because last week, Debbie Gentry did Heckam Loans uh, in, in second homes. It was a Heckam second. And okay. so we're doing part two next Tuesday, which thank you very much for he heading us into next Tuesday's Look thing. at that. And I didn't even know that. <laughs> but that is a TikTok that I'm about to do this week is the heckum part of second homes and being able, which after, if I don't believe Debbie, 62 or 63 on that heckum? 62, correct? 62. 62. One so yes, you should see the wealth of home ownership. And we're not talking just in the United States. We're talking worldwide. It's right. huge. And so right. any anybody in the senior demographic at 55 and over or 50 and over in some areas, you know, it's huge. Yeah. It's so just not intact. It's it's there. Now, you know, it, it it's suddenly completely different. A again, when you really know who that customer is and you attack it from that perspective, it's not just about, oh, so you're thinking of selling, oh, for you're thinking of buying. Now all of a sudden it's, did you know? Have you ever considered? Did you even know this was possible, right? And you're, you're looking at, so that's just it from a potential investment and an income standpoint. You know, you run down the list on all the other stuff that we talked about um, on what's possible, anything from transitioning to, you know, assisted living or downsizing and what all of your options are. You know, have you reached the point where you need to downsize but aren't sure where to go? Have you considered this, 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 this? See, now we've made it all about what matters to the avatar, right? And when you do that, it changes things completely. Well, now you've become in a consultant mm -hmm. rather than being a salesperson. Exactly, exactly. Consultants are paid more than salespeople in many instances. So there you, there you go. And that's exactly the, what you want to be in. You, you want to be a valued resource, right? But you can't be a valued resource, again, unless you know what's important to that customer you'd like to target, right? And so, you know, and I know I said that the avatar is completely made up and the avatar itself is, it's just... When you're crafting your messages, you're going to craft them as if you're speaking to them, right? That message is going to resonate with a wide variety of people, much more than if it's just a general message, right? So in doing that, you're going to find that, like you just said, you're going to make it known that you're much more of a consultant on that. They get the, they'll, they'll, they'll reach the understanding that you're trying to help them, not just sell them something you're offering those resources, so. Yeah, let's open up the floor to anybody who's got questions. We're coming down to the end of the wire. I just wanna make sure everybody gets an opportunity to ask their questions. Anybody? Open up your mic if you have any <laughs> questions. I'll just say thank you, Andrew. Great session, glad you could come. Hey, you're welcome, happy to... Uh... Happy to be here. Andrew, oh, I want you. to think, I'm sorry, somebody was talking? I just said thank you, Andrew. Not a problem. Andrew, I want to thank you on behalf, behalf of the Seniors Network Group and some of our board, which I haven't even introduced, Donald Maycott and Debbie Gentry and Laura. Um, the four of us are here empowering and educating all of our agents in the 55 market and we love learning about new things and I think I could say for most of us on here we have no idea until today what this was I mean other than I think Debbie and Donald most of us had no idea so I appreciate you bringing this information if there's anything else you want to teach be my guest come back hey appreciate it um, and I'll make sure I get a, uh, a link to the slide deck out to you and the worksheet. And the worksheet. I will get that to you as well. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate Thank it. You. Not a problem. Everyone have a good night. All right. Appreciate yep. it. Your Thank time. You. Appreciate All it. Right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.